my name's Liz, I'm the Beggar That Sews. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you're a subscriber. As always, it's really lovely to have you here as I share my sewing journey. So welcome back to my channel. Today's video is one of my Sunday sewing catch-ups and we are on episode 58. Um, as usual, I've got my notebook in front of me and I've got a whole host of things that I want to share with you today, including quite a few things that I've been busy making and I was hoping that I'd be able to get some time to make lots of things over half term. So I'm going to talk about those. Um, I've got a couple of patterns, a new challenge, a couple of new vloggers that I wanted to mention um, and then as usual some sewing plans that I wanted to talk about too. So before we dive into all of those things I'll let you know what I'm wearing and I am wearing a Halloween themed outfit. I thought I'd pop on one of my Halloween jumpers um, because this will go out the day before Halloween. Um, I'll probably wear this, in fact I will wear this to school this week. Um, it's Halloween tomorrow um, when the children go back to school after half term and I'm really excited about wearing my Halloween themed jumpers. I've got three and then I've got a Halloween themed blouse and I'm definitely going to wear them across the week even though it's Halloween on Monday. I think it's still okay to wear them for the whole week. I think the children will really enjoy seeing me wear them and I think I'll start with this one. Uh, it's super cute fabric from First for Fabrics. It's got mummies and pumpkins all over it and then like stars on a black background. It's jersey fabric and I have turned it into a Southbank sweater which is a Nina Lee pattern. And then I've just got it on with my Yanta overalls in a black corduroy fabric that I got from Sister Mintaka years ago. I got it for um, Christmas and then as usual I finished the Yantas with buckles and I just usually get these from Amazon or my local haberdashery or um, John Lewis if I'm ever sort of near a John Lewis. I tend to pick up a couple of packs just so I've always got them in my sewing stash and the preferred brand I'll grab them because I've got a pair of Yantas that I'm planning to sew in the next week so I have ordered some buckles and they've arrived so I'll just grab them so you can see what I prefer to use. So I prefer to use the prim ones although I've just realised the wrong size has come. Um, I thought I'd ordered medium, so I'm going to have to get some more ordered. Um, but yeah, I prefer the prim buckles for dungarees. And that's just my preferred method to finish the yanters. They do recommend that you do buttonholes and buttons, but I just prefer uh, dungaree clips. It means that you can adjust them. And actually Lola's borrowed these dungarees a couple of times and it's meant that I can adjust the straps really easily for her to fit in them as well. I'll stand up. It's gonna be a bit tricky to show you the whole outfit just because they're on a black background. But I will put pictures in of all the things that I talk about today. So I love the answers. I've got pockets at the front, pockets at the back. I never have to put uh, there's an option to put a side zip in, but I never have to put the side zip in. You can see they're quite roomy, um, roomy enough to feel comfortable without feeling too sort of baggy. And then um, they stop at my ankle, fairly loose fitting around the legs, um, just really, really comfortable. And then that's what the back looks like. So that is what I'm wearing today. Um, as I said, with anything that I've made, I will make sure that I put pictures in so you can see what the garments look like on my body. Um, but I reflected back on the last video and what some of my sewing plans were. And I talked about being really excited about sewing up some bomber jackets using the quilted fabric that I've got. Um, I talked about maybe sewing up a gilet type jacket using that gorgeous pink iridescent fabric that I got from Fabric Godmother. Um, I talked about my upcycle project and I also wanted to sew up some yantas and possibly make a start on some Riley dungarees. I didn't get any of those things done. Um, I completely went off on a tangent. I got loads of things cut out um, and I got quite inspired to cut out some um, sort of projects for fabrics that have been in my stash for ages. And with the pink iridescent fabric, I am denied about whether to sew up a gilet or whether I should try and sew up just a coat. So I dug out one of my favourite coat patterns and I've got it here. I've sewn this coat pattern for myself but I've also sewn it as a present for my mum. And it's the Tilly and the Buttons Eden coat. And I started to think, would the pink iridescent quilted fabric work as an Eden? Um, but I didn't have enough fabric. Um, I got quite frustrated with myself when I was trying to work out. I've been umming and ahhing about what pattern to go for. And when I settled on this, I just could not get the pattern pieces to work with the amount of fabric that I had. And then I thought, do I order some more fabric or do I just change my mind again and go with a different pattern? I've actually decided to go for a different pattern with the pink iridescent fabric. And I'm gonna talk about that at the end of the video when I talk about my plans. Um, but I then got my heart set on a quilted Eden coat. So using some quilted fabric. 
And luckily for me, I had some quilted fabric in my stash that I bought from First Fabrics ages ago when I was first toying with the idea of sewing up a um, sort of quilted puffer jacket. Um, I asked on, I think I must have asked on Instagram or I might have asked on here, did anyone know where I could get some cheaper quilted fabric just so I could test out or twirl the bomber jacket and then the lovely Tamlin said on the time messaged me to say that uh, First for Fabrics had some quilted um, fabrics that would work. So I asked for a sort of forest green shade of quilted fabric and it arrived. But in the end, I decided to just dive in and sew up the bomber jacket using the rainbow quilted fabric. Um, so that quilted fabric from First for Fabrics has stayed in my stash for ages and I've not really known what to do with it. So when I was getting really frustrated with myself that the pink iridescent fabric wouldn't work for this, I then thought, I'm pretty sure I've got about three metres of the quilted fabric from First for Fabrics and would that work? And it did and I'm so excited about this coat. I think it's going to be perfect for the autumn winter. I've um, walked around my house wearing it just to see what it feels like um, and I feel really warm in it and that's inside my house. So when I go outside I think it's just going to be absolutely perfect. So let me grab it. I will put pictures. What I will say is it's not completely finished. Um, there's a couple of things that I'll talk to you about what I need to finish with this coat. But here it is. So this is the fabric from First for Fabrics. I can't remember how expensive it was. If I can find out, then I'll put some information in now. And then I had fun going through my stash uh, for some lining fabric. And I had this uh, cotton fabric. It's so pretty. And I haven't used this for anything yet. It was just sitting in my stash. I thought I was going to turn it into a dress and I didn't. And I'm so glad that I didn't because I think it's perfect for this jacket. I just think it's such a pretty lining. Um, and you can see that contrast on the hood. Um, this fabric is really bouncy. You can see that on the hood, it's really thick. It was a little bit tricky to sew with, I'll be honest. Um, but I'm really pleased with how the coat has finished. So I'm gonna pop it on just so I can talk to you about what I haven't finished doing with this coat. So I have opted to put a zip in this coat. So I'm gonna zip it up just so you can see what it looks like. And I've just got a forest green uh, zip. Ooh. There's the zip. And then I've got pockets on the coat. But I decided not to um, put the pocket, you can put a flap on the pocket. I decided not to and just have them as open pockets. And you can see that gorgeous lining on the inside. So what I need to do with the coat, you'll be able to see, it hasn't got any poppers going down. And that's because I was debating about whether to do the poppers. Look how battered my pattern is, pattern packet. Um, I couldn't decide whether to do poppers or whether to do like the duffel fastenings, but I couldn't find a colour of these in the shades that I wanted for this coat. So I've actually ended up ordering some snaps. So that's what I need to finish. Um, if I put the hood up, you'll be able to see. Sort of fasten like that. Look how big that hood is. It's going to keep me so toasty and warm. Um, so I need to put some snap fastening on the hood to keep me nice and warm. And then also going all the way down here. Ooh. I need to put some snaps on there too um, as well and I think that is just going to keep me toasty and warm. If I stand up you'll be able to see my knees are here so it stops sort of mid-thigh I would say um, but yeah it's so warm. I'm gonna have to take it off. Such a warm coat I feel really hot. <laughs> um, and then the other thing that I am really annoyed with myself. So I finished it beautifully. I'm really pleased with the finish really took my time. I'm really pleased with how the hood looks. I'm really pleased with how the zip's been inserted and I think it's a really lovely neat finish. Um, the lining's in really nicely at the bottom. But as you can see, I have, um, I was gonna say stapled, I definitely haven't stapled. I've pinned a label because this fabric's quite bouncy, so I thought with the um, hem facing to make sure that it stays on that side, I thought I'd give it a press. Do not press this kind of fabric. I've learnt the hard way. So if I take the label off, you'll be able to see that I've burnt the bottom of the fit. I mean, it's the facing, so nobody else is gonna know that it's there, but I'm really annoyed with myself. Um, so you can see where I've burnt the fabric. So to rectify this problem, um, because I'm worried if I don't do anything, that stuffing's gonna start coming out. Um, I could do some embroidery over this patch, so it'd just be shown on this side, but I thought that might look a little bit odd. 
So instead what I'm gonna do, I think, is I've got a label and I've picked this one that says, I'm probably thinking about sewing, because to be honest, I'm pretty much thinking about sewing all the time. Um, so I was thinking about putting this label over the burnt bit and then I'll hand stitch around that. And then where you've got, um, when you attach the lining to the coat, you leave a gap. And I haven't sewn that up yet because I thought I could put my hand in there, um, sandwiched between the two layers. So I can just um, sort of stitch around that label without it showing on the other side. I hope that makes sense. So that's what I think I'm going to do. But I'm really annoyed with myself that I've burnt the fabric was such a silly thing to do. I did manage to press the rest of the coat but I just put a towel between and I made sure the iron was on a really low setting um, but for whatever reason I didn't test it before I did that so I've ended up with that on the bottom of the coat which is really annoying. So yeah I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the label on the inside so it just covers that section of the coat but I am really annoyed with myself about that but I'm really pleased with the lining I think the lining goes really nicely against that green. And I think this is going to be the snuggliest, coziest coat ever um, for autumn winter. I don't know. My husband was asking, is it waterproof? I don't think it is waterproof. It might be shower resistant, um, but I think it's going to keep me nice and warm. So that was an unexpected make. I wasn't planning to sew that up at all. But I think I just got myself so frustrated with not being able to work out what to do with the pink iridescent fabric. I remembered that I had this gorgeous green quilted fabric in my stash and I was just determined to sew up the Eden coat. So I'm really pleased that I've got a new winter coat. I'm definitely going to get lots and lots of wear out of that one. Um, I think sticking with the theme of things just not really working out, um, I shared my sew up cycle plans a couple of weeks ago and I shared this gorgeous um, jersey skirt that I got from a charity shop. Um, it's a green background with navy polka dots and I talked about turning it into a jumper of some sort. Wasn't quite sure what pattern. So I cut the waistband off the skirt and I lay the fabric out to try and work out what to turn it into. And again, I went round and round and round in circles trying to work out what pattern would fit. I settled on the Tilly and the Buttons sprayer but it's been an absolute disaster. It just hasn't worked at so all. So in the end, I'd cut it all out and tried to make it work and I just couldn't get it to work. Um, I didn't have enough fabric in the end. So what I've ended up with is a t-shirt that I'll probably, well, it's not even a t-shirt, it's, it's a polo neck jumper, but I'll end up wearing this just around the house. I won't wear it out. Um, and that's because I've had to use, um, I couldn't get the front bodice piece or the back bodice piece on the fold. So you'll be able to see there's a seam line going down the front and there's a seam line going down the back. And then the sleeves, I couldn't get them quite um, full length. So they stop just above the elbow and it's just it's not what I was expecting the top to turn out like I'll definitely wear it at home there's nothing wrong with it to wear at home um maybe as a sort of a t-shirt that I just wear around the house or jumper that I wear around the house or as a bedtime top when it gets a little bit chilly as a um a cozy little bedtime jumper I don't know how I'd feel about sleeping with a mock turtleneck though in bed um but yeah a bit of a disaster I'm really disappointed with that make um, I might end up just chopping it up and using it as stuffing if I make a poof or something. Um, so yeah, I'm really sad about that because I really loved the fabric, but it didn't work. So my other two upcycle projects, I haven't actually got round to sewing them yet. One of them was a skirt. I've got it here actually. And I'm going to use this to turn it into a blouse of some sort. So I think probably the sagebrush. There's definitely enough fabric there for me to turn it into a sagebrush top. And then the other one, I'm going to turn it into a skirt, which I'm going to talk about at the end of this video. So a bit of a sewing fail with that upcycle, unfortunately. But hey ho, lots of other things that did work out. So as well as my Eden coat, I talked about using this gorgeous pumpkin fabric that I got from Hey So Sister and I wanted to turn it into an autumny dress and that's exactly what I've done and I'm really pleased with this one. I can't wait to wear it to work and um, it's so cute. So I used the Dear and Doe My Sotis dress. Um, it's got these gorgeous buttons down the front. They're sort of a brownie coloured button uh, with a little bit of a cream sort of rim to them. Um, I put a label in that says um, she moves in her own way, which I thought was really lovely and that's from Hey So Sister. And then the Dear and Dear My Sotis dress. I wasn't sure if I was going to put ruffles on the sleeves, but I definitely went with all the ruffles. 
um, but then I didn't have enough fabric to do a full ruffle on the bottom so I've had to do a fairly narrow ruffle on the bottom but that did mean that I used all of the fabric and I did put pockets in this dress too. I'm so pleased with how this has turned out. The Myosotis is one of my favourite dresses and um, I absolutely love it and I think that fabric just works really nicely um, as the Myosotis dress. So I'm really excited about wearing that dress to school, uh, maybe this week or maybe next week, but I'm definitely looking forward to wearing that layered up with a nice chunky cardigan and some thick woolly tights. Um, and that fabric's just gorgeous. My youngest daughter fell in love with this fabric, but I knew that I wanted to turn it into a dress for me. So she's ordered some fabric, well, I ordered it for her, but she's chosen some fabric uh, from Hey Sir Sister. And I'll talk about that when I finish sharing all the things that I've got sewn up. Um, but yeah, I'm really pleased with that dress made up for the sewing fail with my upcycle. Um, then I've got a half finished t-shirt. So I shared this fabric ages ago that I got from uh, New Craft House. It's like a, a really lightweight cotton jersey, but it didn't have a huge amount of stretch to it. If I show you, I'm, there's a bit of stretch there, but not a huge amount. And I think because it didn't have a huge amount of stretch, I wasn't really sure what pattern to go for. But in the end, I went with the Tilly and the Buttons Tabitha t-shirt, just with short sleeves. I don't think this is very seasonally appropriate. I think if I wore this, I would definitely have to layer it up because it is quite a thin um, sort of jersey fabric. But it's just a really basic t-shirt and I think I will get lots and lots of wear out of this and I'm really pleased that I found a use for that fabric. And then something that I was excited about sewing up was using some Christmas jersey fabric that I got from First for Fabrics, this gorgeous green Christmas tree themed um, fabric. And the pattern that I wanted to use was the Tilly the Buttons Billy Jumper. So you can turn it into a sweater dress or you can turn it into a jumper with balloon sleeves and that's exactly what I've gone for. Um, I wanted to get this sewn up so that I had it ready for the start of December. So I'm a, a whole month ahead of myself in terms of Christmas. Um, but I was really excited about sewing up this jumper and this was a welcome break from something tricky. I sewed this straight after I'd sewed up the Eden coat, which is a trickier make. I've gone for the balloon sleeve, so nice and voluminous at the sleeve head and also at the bottom with that gorgeous cuff. Um, and then it's got a hem band on the bottom as well there. I love this fabric. It's so beautiful. So this is like a sage green with all the Christmas trees. I think this colorway was sold out, but they've got it in like a cream color. So I'll link the fabric down below if they still got some of that in stock. It's such a gorgeous fabric. And this is going to be a really snuggly um, jumper to wear um, in the run up to Christmas. I'm excited about wearing that. And I think this would go underneath my dungarees that I've got on now. And I've got a green pair of dungarees. I think this would go with really well as well so i love christmas i'm really excited about getting all of my christmas jumpers out but it's really nice to have another christmas jumper ready to wear to work then i shared this sort of drapey fabric that i got from like so amazing and i wasn't sure what to turn it into because it was really bouncy drapey fabric in the end i've gone with one of my favorite jumper patterns and that is the nina lee south bank sweater um, and actually, I think this is going to make a really gorgeous South Bank sweater. Um, it's still quite bouncy, you can see that, but actually I've put it on and this fabric feels so lovely and soft to wear that I think this is going to be a really nice addition to my wardrobe. So I've gone with the cropped version with the hem band on the bottom and then the cuffs um, on the sleeves and then you've got that gorgeous collar detail. Um, and it feels really lovely to wear. It's absolutely gorgeous and snuggly and actually it felt quite warm. For quite a lightweight fabric, it still felt really warm to wear. So I'm really pleased um, that I've used that fabric. I've had that fabric in my stash for about three years now, just not really sure what to turn it into. I'd bought it, I think, originally wanting to turn it into a cardigan, but it was just such a bouncy fabric that I didn't really feel like the cardigan worked. So I'm pleased that I've turned that into a South Bank sweater and that's added to my um, South Bank sweater collection. I've got quite a few now. So the final make of my half term is something again that wasn't planned, but I felt really inspired to get it cut out and then hopefully have enough time to sew it up. It's sticking with the warm and snuggly theme and it's also sticking with the theme of outerwear. So I've got this absolutely gorgeous chunky corduroy fabric from Semi Sunshine and it's fur lined uh, here. How gorgeous is that? Fur lined. It's so warm. It's amazing. 
and I had wanted to turn it into the Friday Pattern Company Ilford jacket and I wasn't sure which sort of um sort of layout what style to go for in terms of the pattern because there's lots of different things that you can do with it in terms of pockets um, and then there's two different lengths so you can do a cropped or you can do um sort of a longer length I've gone for this version and then in terms of the pockets I've gone for quite a deep um pocket that's quite open so there's lots of different pocket options so there was this sort of um they've got like slanted sides on that pocket um then there was also a pocket up here um i mean you can see it on the line drawings easier but i've gone for these sort of really deep um pockets and i really wanted to play around with the fur side of the fabric as well so the pockets are stitched onto the front of the jacket and then what i did was i turned over the top of the pocket piece because it's quite a deep pocket piece if i put my hand in you can't really tell where it is because it's camouflaged in with the coat but it's a really deep pocket. So I just turned that over a couple of times and then top stitched it. But you can't actually see the top stitching because of the fur and the fur's really thick, but the pockets are so lovely and warm. And I think wearing this on like an autumnal afternoon where it's a little bit chilly, but you wanna keep your hands nice and warm. I'm just gonna walk around with my hands in my jacket pocket. And then I wanted to show off the fluffy side of that fabric on the collar. And I wasn't quite sure the best way to do this. So in the end, what I did for the collar was I cut out two of the collar pieces. Um, but when I sewed them together, I sewed right, so right side and wrong side together so that when I turned it out, I ended up with the fur side on one side and the corduroy on the other side. Now, I wondered whether I would have just been able to get away with cutting one collar. But when I was cutting this out, the fur just kept molting away from the corduroy. And I was just really worried that eventually I'd end up with no fur on the underside of the collar because it would just keep coming away. So in the end, I did cut out two collars. It's meant that the collar is quite thick and quite bouncy. But I think over time, I think over time the collar will settle. And I have sort of stitched it here to try and keep it down as well. I've gone with jeans buttons on the coat um, because if you look at the pattern, wherever I put it, um, you can put chunky buttons on. But I just thought with the look of the jacket that I was going for, I thought that the jeans buttons looked better. The fabric was an absolute pain to sew with because it's so thick and bouncy and just had a mind of its own. So I had to really take my time. And I just ended up covered in all the bits of fluff as well, where I'd cut the fabric. Um, in the end, with the buttonholes, I ended up, you can see, I think, where the um, where I've used my fabric pen to mark it. I just need to give that a press and that will all dissolve. But I ended up sewing, I don't know if you can see them, but I had to sew the buttonholes manually. So I just set my machine to a really narrow zigzag and then I just sewed them manually because there was no way that thick fabric was gonna go through the machine um, with a normal buttonhole. I tried it on a test piece of fabric, which was folded over, but it was just too bouncy and too thick and it just kept getting in the way. So in the end, I sewed the buttonholes manually. So I just measured them out and just use a really narrow zigzag stitch. I haven't cut the buttonholes yet, but I will. Um, but yeah, I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. Um, it's really lovely and warm, really cosy. I'll pop it on so you can see what it looks like, but it's exactly what I was hoping for in a jacket using this fabric. I've seen so many gorgeous, you can see where that collar is standing up. It does lie flat, but I've seen so many gorgeous, like chunky, uh, corduroy fur lined jackets on the high street that I really wanted to sew one up myself and it's turned out exactly how I wanted it to like the sleeves are the perfect length I feel like it stops where I want it to it's really lovely and snuggly and warm and I really love the pockets as well they're just really deep and I can get lots of things in my pocket and I'm really pleased that I decided to accentuate that sort of fur from the inside of the corduroy on the pocket I think that's a really nice design detail and I'm really pleased that I went with those buttons as well because I think that they just really add to the character of the jacket. Again, I feel really warm wearing it, so I'm going to take it off. Um, but yeah, that was something that I wanted to get sewn up, but I wasn't sure if I'd be able to sew it up in half term. But I'm really pleased that I've got that sewn up as well because this is definitely going to keep me nice and warm at work. Um, I think I'll be able to wear this in my classroom. My classroom is the closest room to the door to outside. And because I work in reception, the children get to go out, um, you know, as much as they want to and the door's left open. So it means my classroom gets very, very cold. 
so I always need some kind of layering cardigan or outerwear to keep me nice and warm when I'm inside and the children are going outside and I think this is going to be perfect and I really love that fabric if um so me sunshine i've got any of this left i'll link it down below for you because it is so snuggly and warm i would definitely recommend that fabric but just be warned you'll end up covered in all of the fur which is exactly what happened to me so a bumper edition of what i've been getting sewn up but that is because it was half term and i've had lots of time in the evenings to um sew up lots of different things completely different to what i was expecting to get sewn up um, but I've really enjoyed sewing all of those things and the jackets especially I'm really really pleased with and that gorgeous pumpkin dress I can't wait to wear it I just think it's so pretty and that fabric's beautiful so um, the next thing I wanted to share with you is a piece of fabric I haven't actually got it in front of me but this is a piece of fabric that I've ordered from um, Hey So Sister and that's because Lola really loved this gorgeous pumpkin fabric that I got from Hey So Sister um, and wanted me to use any leftovers of that fabric for something for her. But I knew that I wouldn't have any leftovers. So I showed her some other versions of that gorgeous like happy veg fabric and they had this gorgeous um, beetroot themed fabric. And then they also had this really gorgeous carrot themed fabric. So I've ordered a metre and a half of that and I'm going to turn it into a skirt for her. And the skirt pattern I'm going to use is the Alice Irvine flat fronted skirt pattern because I can draft that to Lola's measurements. And I'm definitely going to put pockets in her skirt as well because she asks for pockets any time I make something for her. I haven't got the fabric in front of me yet because it hasn't arrived, but I'll put a picture in of what the fabric is. It's so cute and I'm really excited about turning it into a skirt for Lola and I know that she's just gonna get loads of wear out of it as well. So I talked about another one of my sew up cycle projects um, and I shared this in my video, but it was a baby pink um, sort of duvet spread, uh, double duvet spread cover. Uh, it was baby pink background and then these gorgeous green leaves all over it and I wasn't sure what to turn it into, I asked for lots of help and suggestions and over on Instagram in my stories I asked um, if anyone else liked using the same pattern time and time again to make the same garment but in different fabric or a different pattern to give it a different look and I got loads of people commenting and sharing the patterns that they like to go back to time and time again and somebody said about the estuary um, pattern because it's got gigantic pockets and I couldn't remember who said it so I'm really sorry if you're watching this video and you were the person that said to me about the estuary skirt so it's a sew so liberated pattern and I wanted to talk about this skirt because I'm going to use it to sew up um, a skirt using the duvet cover fabrics. I think that would work perfectly for this skirt pattern. So it's by So Liberated, it's called the Estuary Skirt Pattern. I've had it in my stash for ages, but it's a pattern I haven't got around to sewing up. So this is definitely the little nudge that I need to have a go at sewing this up. I then went and searched the hashtag and there are so many gorgeous estuary skirts, that's really tricky to say, um, that have been shared over on Instagram. I feel really inspired to give the pattern a go. Um, it comes in sizes 0 to 30. It's described as an easy to sew, elastic backed um, waist A-line skirt with patch pockets or you can put inseam pockets in. It can be sewn with a full button placket going down the centre front or you can put a faux button placket in. I'm probably going to go for the faux button placket. Um, in terms of fabric recommendations, they recommend medium weight, um, linen, linen blend, cotton, cotton poplin, etc. So a medium weight um, type of fabric. The duvet cover is medium weight slash sort of lightweight, it's a bit floaty and it felt quite silky. Um, I think that's going to make a really beautiful estuary skirt. So I'm really looking forward to sewing that pattern up. And then the next pattern I wanted to talk about was an I am pattern. It's a new pattern and I've got all strings detached and knotty gnome crafts to thank for this pattern. Because when I shared, I'm going to show you this gorgeous iridescent quilted fabric. I'm um, one of my videos asking for, I think it might have been my last Sunday sewing catch up. I was asking for suggestions of what to turn that into or what pattern because I wanted a gilet type pattern. Both of you suggested the new pattern by I am patterns, the Hather jacket um so thank you so much for um alerting me to the pattern so i hadn't seen it it is exactly what i was looking for i've ordered it i've had it copy shop printed i've traced it off and it's ready to be cut out in this gorgeous fabric um it's a lined um sort of gilet style jacket 
so the fabric that i've got to line it with is this gorgeous poplin fabric i can't remember where i got this from it might have been semi sunshine it's on a baby blue background with all these pink white yellow and purple flowers and i think that's going to go gorgeous that's going to go gorgeous i think that's going to go really well with this quilted fabric i think that'll give a really cute little um sort of flash of design on the inside of the jacket so the I Am Havens in size is 34 to 52. Six different views with this jacket, so views A to F. I'll put some images of line drawings in now. Um, in terms of fabric recommendations, they recommend quilted fabric, faux fur, corduroy, needle cord, boiled wool, wax cotton and denim, a whole range of fabrics. And they also recommend for the lining cotton, cotton poplin, tensel, etc. So I'm going to use this cotton poplin fabric that I think I got from Sumi Sunshine. There's options to, um, I've just got it written down. So there's an options to do a zipped jacket. I'm going to do a zipped jacket. I've ordered the zip. I've just gone with a white zip because I think that will go um, with the iridescent uh, quilted fabric. I couldn't get a pink um, zip that was close enough to this colour fabric so I've just gone with a white zip hopefully that will look fine um, you can also do a button down version you can have a version with a collar or you can have no collar and you can have a version with a hood or no hood I'm going to go for a hood I might lengthen the pattern it depends I'm going to play around with the pattern pieces with the amount of fabric that I've got and see if I want to lengthen it because I felt inspired by a coat that my friends wore to work which was like a gilet type coat but it um, extended beyond her knee and it had a hood. I definitely want to use the pattern to, um, I definitely want to use the version that's got the hood. I'm going to do a zip and I probably won't extend it thinking about the size of the zip that I've ordered but I could always get a different length zip if I decide that I want to use as much of the fabric as possible. So it's still a work in progress as to which one I'm going to go for. There's an option to um, put in welt pockets or there's an option to put patch pockets. I'm probably going to go for patch pockets. Um, I'm really excited about this. I think this pattern is exactly what I was looking for and exactly what I had in my mind. Um, and I think those two fabrics are just going to go so nicely together. So I can't wait to start on that project. I'm probably going to spend some time today getting it cut out and then hopefully next weekend I'll get a little bit of time to do some sewing and by that point my zip should have arrived because I think it's arriving midweek. So thank you for those suggestions and I'm really excited about giving that project a start. So then I've got two new YouTube channels to talk to you about. I have yet to go and watch their videos because they are brand new. So they've only got, um, Andy's only got one vlog over on her channel at the moment which is an introduction to her channel and then Kerry has got two vlogs over on her channel so I'm yet to watch them but I am going to give them a watch a little bit later today um, and I remember lots of people shouting out my channel when I first started um, vlogging and it really does give you a confidence boost when people share your channel so I would definitely say go over and give them a little follow and watch their introduction videos um, and just give them a little bit of support. I do love watching lots of people on YouTube when I'm sewing and quite often I'll spend a good four or five hours sewing um, in the evening so it's always nice to have a vlog on in the background. So the first one is the lovely Andy and her channel is So Andy Sews. So like I said, she's only got the introduction vlog on her channel at the moment. Um, I'll link their channels down below so you can go and um, follow the link and then give them a little follow. Um, make sure you subscribe to their channel and watch their videos. And then the other channel is Kerry and Kerry's channel is called Sociology. She's got two vlogs on her channel so far. One about the Sew Up Cycle Challenge and also a catch up vlog where she's talking about lots of different things. So do head over and give Andy and Kerry a follow over on their YouTube channels. And I'll link all the information down below for you. There's a new sewing challenge that is coming out and it's being run by Cloth Edit and Dahlia Society. Um, it's going to be called hashtag sew wrapped and the idea behind it is that we sew a wrap garment in a knit or woven fabric so it can be a top, a dress, a skirt, shorts, trousers, jumpsuit, vest, robe, jacket or coat. You can use any pattern type so it can be an indie pattern, it can be a commercial, vintage or you can draft your own. Um, it must have a traditional wrap style closure or feature a wrap of some kind in the design. Wrap trousers can be a partial wrap. 
Um, it needs to be an adult garment um, and a new post if you want to enter into the competition. So they'd like us to um, share a new post rather than tagging older makes. You need to use the hashtag um, so wrapped to talk about your plans, your progress, and then also the final reveal. So it's open worldwide and it starts on October the 29th and it closes on November the 27th. And when you are sharing your entry into the competition, make sure that you tag Cloth Edit and Dahlia Society in your post so that they get to see what you've made. Um, so that sounds like a really exciting challenge um, running between the 29th of October and the 27th of November. I've got quite a few um, sort of wrap patterns in my pattern stash. Um, so yeah, I'm going to dig out some of my patterns and see which one I feel inspired to sew up. So I just thought I'd let you know about that sewing challenge. So finally, I always like to finish with my sewing plans. I've already talked about the pink gilet using these two gorgeous fabrics. I'm definitely going to get that cut out. Um, my pattern has arrived from, um, Fabuloso. I got it copy shop printed. So I'm definitely looking forward to getting that cut out. Um, and reading the pattern to see how complex it is. I've got my uh, needle cord dinosaur yanta overalls cut out so you can see that's the pocket piece. Um, I can't wait to get this sewn up. I think those dinosaurs are super cute. So I've got that all cut out. I just need to make a start on sewing them up. I'm going to order some new buckles because the buckles that have arrived have turned out they're the wrong size. They're too small. Then I have dug out denim that I'm going to be using for my Riley dungarees so I've got the pattern here so I'm going to be sewing up this version and I'm going to be using this gorgeous denim fabric uh, I can't remember where I got this from actually but I've got meters and meters of this denim fabric might have been Abacan fabrics so I think this will um, make a really lovely pair of Riley dungarees and I think there'll be a really nice traditional sort of pair of dungarees in that gorgeous denim fabric and I'm going to use those as sort of a wearable twirl. Um, and then if they work out and I like the fit, I'm, I'm sure they will because I really love True Bias um, pattern instructions. They're always really detailed and hold your hand. And I've sewn up quite a few True Bias garments and the fit is always really lovely on me. Um, it's this aspect around here. Um, I just want to um, sort of really nail that fit because it looks quite close fitting there. So I'm going to twirl this version and then once I've got the fit worked out and I'm happy with how they look, I've got a really jazzy denim fabric that I got from Fabric Revival that I think I would like to turn into a really jazzy pair of Riley dungarees. So that's going to be an ongoing project, I think, um, and I'll update you with how I get on with the twirl of that um, pattern as well. And then I've also got cut out this gorgeous fabric from a So Heavy Jane box and I'm going to be turning that into a flat fronted skirt which is the free pattern by Alice Irvine. So I've got that ready to go, I just need to get it sewn up. That will come together quite quickly um, and I think that will be a really lovely addition to my autumn winter wardrobe as well. So I've just got that in my little zip wallet ready to go. So lots of projects on the go as usual. I've really enjoyed half term, getting lots of things sewn up and quite a few surprising projects that I wasn't planning to get sewn up, but I just felt really inspired to get them sewn up and they're definitely gonna add to my autumn winter wardrobe and keep me nice and cozy and warm. Um, the last thing I wanted to say actually was I am filming a couple of vlogs um, over the next couple of weeks to make sure that I'm ahead because I know that this half term at school is super busy and I don't always end up having a huge amount of time at the weekends to film vlogs. Um, I always try and bring out a video on a Wednesday and I also always bring out my video most of the time on a Sunday unless I'm poorly or I've got things going on. So I'm trying to get ahead so that I've always got my Wednesday videos to come out. So if there's anything that you would like to see me film a video on, please do let me know in the comments below and I'm going to make a list of all the different vlogs that you would be interested in seeing from me and then I'll go through them and um, have a go at filming as many of them as I possibly can because I want to make sure that I'm filming um, and putting videos out there that you want to keep coming back and watching. Um, I hope you've enjoyed hearing what I've been getting up to this half term. 
I've been sewing more than usual because it's been half term, so I've had a bit more time. We've also been doing a little bit of DIY at home, and I shared over on Instagram that we are creating a little cosy den for Ruby. Um, she has autism and, as a result, needs some downtime to regulate herself and just some space and quiet time away from the busyness of the home. So we've been turning a little sort of cupboard. It sounds tiny, but actually it's quite a big cupboard. We've been turning that into a cosy little sensory den for her which has been a really exciting project. It's ongoing, we've still got quite a lot of things that we wanna put in there, but she's been really enjoying using that space and we've enjoyed having that project um, as a family for this half term too. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd really love it if you could hit that subscribe button, you'll get notified of when I bring out my next video. Thank you as always for watching, take care and I'll be back soon with another video. Bye.